So how, Logan, how can you uh, encourage us uh, in the Western world as we're struggling in contrast to the persecuted church who's been going through so much worse? Well, thank you so much, uh, Daniel and Merv, for this question. And Daniel, I just want to invite you, uh, you know this, but we love your voice and would love to hear your, your thoughts on these questions as well. I love this question, Mer, that you, I feel in the question, you are guiding our thoughts in a good direction. Um, as Christians, uh, our scripture is filled with the accounts of follower faithful faithful followers of God who have suffered as a result of that. And you can see in the writings of the New Testament, especially that the first Christians had a real burden for those who, who suffered for their faith. And we are to, to have that heart as well. And I think what you helpfully point out is that for many people in many parts of the world, the idea of gathering in large groups publicly has never been a mark of Christian worship. And I think what we see from that, I would say, is the creativity they employ. What we see is that they don't just give up and live in their personal unidimensional Christian lives on their own. I think what we see instead is that they find ways to connect with one another. Because in the Christian understanding, this whole idea even of, of you know, receiving forgiveness of God and fearing him isn't something we can possibly do on our own. It is simply too hard. And we need to be told by one another when we've messed up and fallen short what God is like, that he is present with us. We need to be prayed for for one another. So I think, Merv, what I feel the persecuted church's example reminds us of is that we have the need for community, even when it's hard. And the question is, how can we seek that out in meaningful ways, even if we have to be thoughtful and creative getting our, around the, you know, the, the, the guidelines that, according to Romans 13, Christians are meant to submit to, or meant to submit to our governments. Um, but I think that we need to not make that an excuse to press into community with Christians, with other Christians. And maybe you're not a Christian, but you're wanting to move in this direction. I just encourage you not to do that alone, to think of any Christians you might know who could walk that journey with you. But I think, Merv, I'd say as well, this should just touch our hearts a little bit to give us a tiny taste of what real life is for so many Christians around the world. It's a reminder for us to be praying for them and encouraging them as they face challenges that are so much greater than our own. So that's all I have to say on that, Daniel. I don't know if you have anything to add. You know, that's perfect, Logan. Thanks so much.